The following is a production of Cary TV, the town of Cary's government access channel. the January 7th meeting, quasi-judicial meeting of the Cary Town Council. At this time, I would ask that you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We are at item 1.2 on our agenda, which is the adoption of the agenda, and I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda. So, so moved. There's a motion and a second. Discussion. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Our first quasi-judicial public hearing is for the Cary Town Center sketch plan. This is a continued hearing from November 5th of 2015. Council Member George uh, recently joined our council and was not present when the case was originally presented to council. Mr. George, would you please confirm that you have watched the video and familiarized yourself with the case? Yes, I did, and I appreciate the shout out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Since uh, this hearing was continued, all speakers who were sworn in during the first <coughs> hearing remain sworn in for tonight's hearing, and I understand that there are new speakers who would like to be uh, sworn in. And uh, during this public hearing, who were not sworn in in November's hearing, and we'll pause to allow them to be sworn in by our clerk, Miss um, uh, Jenny. Jenny. <laughs> Miss Jenny. Miss Southern. Miss Southern side. Miss Jenny. Miss Jenny. 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 At this time, and we'll pause until that has been completed. Miss <laughs> Jenny. It's the first one. Southern Foreman. Miss Jenny. Miss Jenny. She did a, a take on that song. Mm -hmm. Her stress of classes. It was. It really was. Because it's here. Very good. At this time, I'll now ask council members if they've had any site visits, sex, partake, communications, financial relationships, specialized knowledge, or close relationship to an affected person to disclose. Starting on my left with Mr. Yurhoff. I have not. Ms. Bush. I have not. Ms. France. Nope. Have not. I have not. I have not. I, I have visited the site. Yes. Yes, I have. Okay. Uh, based on disclosures from the council members, I would invite anyone to the podium at this time who's been sworn in to speak if you have an objection to a council member's participation in this hearing. 
Seeing none, we'll continue, and I'll open the quasi-judicial public hearing, and Mr. Hales of our staff will introduce this hearing, Mr. Hales. Thank you, Council. And as you've already indicated, this is a continuance from the Council's November 5th meeting of last year for Cary Town Center sketch plan. Uh, very briefly, the Cary Town Center Mall site is located at the confluence of Cary Town Boulevard, Southeast Manor Road, and Walnut Street. And the portion of the site under consideration this evening is only a, a three-acre portion of the overall 68-acre site. Just to remind Council the existing conditions, and, and a lot of people drive by this on a daily basis, but basically it was a, a three-acre portion of the site that was previously home to a Ragazzi's, a Taco Bell, and a medical office building, all three of which have been removed from the site uh, as of today. Refresh Council's uh, memory in regards to Town Council modifications. At the November 5th meeting, uh, there were nine minor modifications or modifications to development standards that were under consideration. Town Council did take action on, on uh, seven of those. Two of those were withdrawn uh, by the applicant at the podium before decisions were made. I've kind of color-coded it to kind of go over the green for approval, yellow for uh, was withdrawn by the applicant, and red for denial. So Town Council did uh, approved modifications to allow development within the thoroughfare corridor buffer along Carytown Boulevard, did approve a 25% parking overage, and did approve a modification to eliminate the pedestrian connection out to Carytown Center, uh, Carytown Boulevard, and that was actually being provided on the opposite side of the driveway. They did deny two minor modifications, one to um, the setback and one to the streetscape width along Southeast Maynard Road. And the applicant withdrew a request eliminating the pedestrian connection uh, from the site out to Southeast Maynard. And just zooming out a little larger, there were three modifications that were on the overall mall site itself. Uh, the applicant did withdraw an a request for waiver of right-of-way dedication along Southeast Maynard. Uh, council approved a waiver of the right-of-way dedication along Walnut Street, and they approved a waiver of dedication of an easement for a future uh, streetside trail multi-use path. So the applicant has uh, listened to what council uh, said at the last meeting and made some revisions to the site. Uh, there are a lot of small revisions all across the site, but they can be distilled down to really two or three major ones. Uh, the building footprint itself has been reduced in size and shifted to the east to allow more room along Maynard Road. Uh, the parking lot at the eastern end of the site has been uh, reduced in size. The six spaces that were causing the pinch point on the eastern end of the site were eliminated, which has allowed them to make some changes to pedestrian connectivity. As a result of that, uh, two of the approved mo modifications from the last meeting have been modified to be less intense than what was approved by council, so we're not gonna make you revote on those just to make you aware of the changes. Um, the parking overage was reduced due to the reduction in building square footage and the, the commensurate reduction in spaces required, plus the loss of the six parking spaces on the eastern end of the site. Uh, council approved a 25% reduction. That is now a 7, I mean, a 25% overage. That is now a 17% overage uh, for the site overall. And then the second one that got modified is the pedestrian connectivity. Uh, council did approve a modification to the connectivity out to Carytown Boulevard. However, with the loss of the six spaces on the eastern end of the site, there's now sufficient room to put that sidewalk on this portion of the mall property instead of moving it across the driveway and causing pedestrians to do two vehicular crossings. Uh, so you see the newer arrangement in yellow dash line and the previously approved modification will go away. So where that leaves us today, uh, there are three decisions before council this evening. The first, uh, the first two of those are new modification requests because council denied the old ones. Uh, new modifications requests in regards to streetscape and uh, setback widths along Southeast Main Road. And then the third is the overall site plan approval, which was never acted on at the last meeting. So the first request, Section 724 of the LDO, requires a 30-foot streetscape width for non-residential developments along thoroughfares. Originally, uh, the applicant had proposed a variable width streetscape between uh, 10 and 12 feet. 10 foot for the building and 12 for the drive through lane. Uh, as a result of the shrinking of the building's footprint and moving the building to the east, they are now proposing a 15 foot streetscape along the building portion and a 14 foot wide streetscape for the par property, portion of the property south of the building uh, where the drive through lane would be located. 
And the second modification deals with a setback and very similar, the, the two are very closely tied. The LDO requires a 30 foot setback from the right of way for non-residential development. Uh, council originally denied a request for a 10 foot setback from the right of way and the applicant has moved the building and, and reduced the square footage to uh, provide a 15 foot setback, which is half what's required by the LDO. That concludes staff's initial presentation and we'll be back following the applicant and any other speakers to provide some additional insight on the modification request. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rails. At this time, we'll call on the applicant's attorney to present arguments and evidence in support of the application by addressing the applicable approval criteria. Uh, thank you, Kevin. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, Jason Barron with Morningstar Law Group here on behalf of the applicant, CBL Properties. Uh, here with me tonight again is Mr. John Michelle of CBL. He's the Vice President of Development and Redevelopment who is overseeing essentially the mall. The mall's his baby. Uh, also here is uh, the entire team we had last time that was sworn in. I won't reintroduce them. Uh, we do have two new members, uh, Kate Novi and Stephanie Garner with LS3P. They're the architects on the site who will walk you through uh, some of the renderings we've done to kind of demonstrate what the new streetscape will look like, what the streetscape will look like as you're approaching either from Maynard or from Carytown Boulevard. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, what has made Cary so great in part is its development standards. Uh, its development standards have, have fostered and nurtured uh, development for a long time that has been a benefit to its citizens. Unfortunately, uh, the town's LDO standards, which are designed for greenfield development, are now standing in the way of existing sites uh, and preventing it, it existing infill development from redeveloping. This case is a great example of that. Where there were once three rundown buildings, the owners are trying to put in a single new building of about the same size, only a little bit smaller built to the current high quality standards that the town has for commercial buildings. The proposed development has less impervious surface and an overall smaller building footprint. And based upon the strict language of the ordinance, this development is not supposed to happen. Put another way, the current ordinance is operating in a fashion that punishes its longtime taxpayers while encouraging new development to seek out greenfield opportunities, resulting in sprawl. Infield redevelopment such as this permits development in places where the infrastructure already exists to support the development. The good news is that while the current regulatory scheme is broken as it applies to redevelopment, the LDO does permit the town council to modify the development standards of the ordinance in order to permit a development of this nature to move forward. That is why this site is before you all as you know. The last time we were here, we presented a case that included a number of minor modifications or modifications rather to the development and design standards of the ordinance. Several of those were approved and as Kevin mentioned, there are still two that are remaining. Uh, the two are the building setback and the streetscape along Maynard. Uh, we have made changes to the plan and I want to outline those again because I, I do think they're important. Not only have we made changes to try to address the issues that remained outstanding, we also made changes to address some of the issues that we heard from members of the council, uh, even though those modifications were approved. For instance, the building square footage has been reduced by a couple of hundred square feet. Uh, the, a portion of the building has actually been lobbed off in order to expand the streetscape. The Maynard streetscape and building setback has been essentially increased from 10 feet to 15 feet, which doesn't sound like much, but in the grand scheme of things, that's a 50% increase from what you all saw the last time we were here. Six parking spaces has been removed. Again, as Kevin mentioned, that was a modification that had already been approved, but the owners heard loud and clear there were still lingering concerns by members of the council associated with the parking, so we wanna do what we can do to try to bring the site into more conformance with the standards of the ordinance. There was a sidewalk that was added where parking was removed. As, as Kevin mentioned, the previous uh, variation of the, of the site included parking spaces that essentially faced this access drive. This is Carytown Boulevard and this is Maynard. Uh, when we rejiggered the site, when we brought the building east, we were able to maintain this drive which allowed us to keep the building together. It allowed one single building which is what we're striving to do. Uh, what we were able to do is to go ahead and eliminate six spaces. We could have squeezed four or five spaces in there, but we said we'll go ahead and eliminate those spaces and we can add in a sidewalk on that side, uh, which would have prevented the interesting back and forth that Councillor Fence and Councillor Bush had on that issue. All in all, I think the council, or at least I hope you will agree that the changes that we've made are, may, are, are changes that result in a, a plan that the town should be proud of. 
At this time, I'm going to ask uh, Kate Novi of LS3P to come up and walk through some of the slides that we've prepared that help I think you all understand what does the streetscape look like, what will the building look like when it is ultimately built. Good evening. Um, my name is Catherine Novi. I work with uh, LSRP Associates in Charlotte. I got my uh, Bachelor's of Architecture degree at the Boston Architectural College in 2009. I've been practicing for approximately six years um, and I'd uh, like to present the evidence that we brought this evening. So Kate, if you could walk through this particular slide. Okay. Um, so what we wanted to be able to show you guys in a very clear um, manner is the streetscape that we'll be seeing through a cross section through both of Carrytown Center Boulevard and through Maynard. So you get a very good idea as to what exactly a pedestrian from street level would be seeing. Um, and so the image on the uh, upper portion of the sheet is uh, looking up Maynard Boulevard towards um, the water tower. And the proposed structure is on the left. Um, as you can see, there is included a large amount of um, plantings and um, shrubbery and landscaping to make sure that we are hiding the um, existing or the proposed walls uh, to keep everything up at the area that it needs to be for parking. And then on the right, you will see the um, existing heights and wall for the Harris Teeter. Um, and those are just shown for scale, so you can get an idea of what it will look like across the street from each other. Um, the second image is looking in that cross section down Maynard Avenue towards the building. And the uh, wall, uh, retaining wall structure, you can see actually changes height and moves down to be uh, very uh, responding to the area that we're going to be building uh, or we're proposing to build. And we are trying to uh, keep that as, uh, as far back from the streetscape as possible to be respectful of that, um, that pedestrian walkway area. Um, this is a. Oops, we'll start sorry. with this one. Okay, this is a, a rendering from that same uh, intersection with the existing Harris Teeter on the right. Um, the original image was taken from Google Earth, and we have composited the uh, the Revit model that we built in our office into that image, so that you could get an idea of scale and setback. Um, this is not showing a proposed uh, new lane. Um, this is with the existing lane structure. So you can see there's quite a bit of setback there um, between the pedestrian uh, walkway and with the uh, retaining wall around the proposed structure. Um, and it's also a wonderful contrast to the retaining wall around the Harris Teeter site, um, which is considerably closer to the, uh, the sidewalk area. And then the second slide, um, this is looking um, from the opposite direction. So you can see the Harris Teeter on the left with its um, uh, existing wall and the proposed wall and building on the right. Um, I think you'll notice that the height difference in this view is quite substantial. Um, we are trying to keep the building as low as possible to still be able to shout any kind of um, rooftop HVAC units to keep it clean and attractive. Um, and we are making sure that it is a, a four-sided building that respects your um, design code wishes um, to try to make sure that it's as attractive a street corner as possible and not filled with parking like it currently is. And then this is a diagram um, that's a straight cut section between the, uh, the Harris Cedar on the right and the uh, proposed structure on the left. So what you'll see there is the existing roadway, um, its height, and then you will see the uh, existing right-of-ways um, that are currently in use. Um, on the Harris Teeter side, it is 62 feet. And on the um, Cary Town Center kind of side, it's uh, currently 46.4, yeah. And then we have the knowledge that there will be the addition of 15.8 feet for an expanded um, proposed right-of-way. So we are going to try to be as, um, as uh, inclusive of that as possible and step an extra 15 feet away from that to give enough room for um, landscaping. And if the street does need to be increased uh, in the later, that will not be a problem. And Kate, if you could just describe briefly, what do, what do these lines represent? These are lines of sight from the center line of the roadway. Um, so what we're basically trying to show is, even though we're a little bit closer to the streetscape than the Harris Teeter is, there's still approximately the same line of sight to the tops of those structures to try to keep it as low as possible and be um, sensitive to the site. Great. Thank you, Kate. Thank you.
Again, Mr. Mayor, our attempt, uh, again, was after the last meeting. We felt like the there was not really confusion, but the council had concerns about what, what you were going to be seeing. What is this going to look like? How's it going to fit when somebody's driving down? If this is built where we're proposing to build it, how's it going to fit with the Harris Teeter that's across the street? We believe it's going to it's going to fit right in. And in fact, because of the the scale of the building, as we said last time, um, it, it, as a much smaller scale building, it, it can actually be closer and, and not feel like it's that much closer. Uh, I hope the council sees we have made modifications where we have the ability to do so. As you heard last time through the testimony, our ability to take that single building and move it much further towards the existing center is constrained greatly by topography. The moment we start to do that, the topography, as you heard last time from Mr. Roach, results in breaking the building up and we go back to what we had previously, and that's not what anybody wants. So, so we're very proud of this plan. Um, we've got our, our team here to answer any questions. and and. I guess I would close by saying consumer interest in malls are changing across America and Cary is no different. Sears has closed its doors and as announced yesterday, as you all are well aware, Macy's will soon be closing at Cary Town Center. That means two of the five anchor tenants that have historically supported this mall will soon be gone. Right now, today, we're only discussing slightly less than 10,000 square feet of retail for redevelopment on this mall. But clearly, we will likely be soon be discussing, at a minimum, more than 200,000 square feet of retail for redevelopment at the site. The decision you all make in this case tonight will send a message to the community, as well as my client. You seven get to dictate what that message will be. A denial of this plan will continue the town's longstanding tradition of greenfield development. And while there may be good development projects to come in the yet-to-be-developed portions of the town of Cary, there will be strains on existing carry infrastructure to support that type of development. An approval of this plan, on the other hand, will send the message the town wants its older sites to redevelop and to do so in a fashion that is in keeping with the long-standing high quality of the town of Cary. An approval will tell the longtime taxpayers of the town that the council wants them back at the table to help them make Cary great once again. We have a good plan that facilitates a great long-term feature at the entrance to the town of Cary and the mall. Unfortunately, the current regulatory scheme prevents this from happening in a way that operates to the detriment of the town of Cary and its citizens. You all have the ability to modify that ordinance to allow this development plan to move forward to keep making Cary great. We respectfully ask you to do so. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Barron. This time I'll invite other speakers who have been sworn in who wish to speak in support of the application to approach the podium one at a time. Anyone else to speak in support? <clears throat> Seeing no one will move on. I invite cross-examination of the witnesses who testified in support of the requests. No cross-examination. So we'll open the hearing to those who are opposed to the request. Anyone opposed? Seeing no one, we'll call on the staff for any additional testimony. Thank you, Council, and I'll try and be brief because a lot of the observations that were made in the previous hearing are still applicable uh, today in regards to approval criteria and other things. Uh, we're going to focus our attention really on the two new modifications uh, or modified modifications, if you will, because they're just re-asking for a, a modified number. Uh, they have changed uh, the streetscape. The streetscape now is going from a 60 to 67 percent reduction to uh, a 50 to 53 percent reduction. Uh, so that, that does represent a smaller deviation from the town standards. Uh, the approval criteria given for council to consider streetscape reductions in the LDO is that provision of the required streetscape would um, prevent a reasonable use of the property based on the zoning and or when additional healthy, healthy vegetation or open space is provided elsewhere on site. Uh, again, the, this three-acre uh, portion of the site is roughly 4% of the overall 60-acre site. That's a very small portion. Uh, they have not provided any additional open space on this portion uh, in regards to, and again, mostly because there's not additional open space to provide because uh, it was previously developed, and the existing buffers uh, wipe out most of what is available to be pr provided. Proposed setback reduction is very similar. They've gone from a... Um, 60% reduction to 50% uh, uh, of the required streetscape going from uh, 10 to 15 feet. You can see in this slide the original proposal with the yellow dash line, orange dash line, the new blue line is the 15-foot the setback. Uh, this is uh, 
requested pursuant to section 3.19, the minor modification section, the approval criteria of which is that it advances the goals and purpose of the ordinance and or results in um, less visual impact or better preservation of existing uh, vegetation or release practical difficulties in developing the site. This three acre portion of the property is constrained on three sides by existing infrastructure serving the mall and the community at large. Uh, so that the size and shape of the property is, is definitely a constraint. Uh, the provision of the additional 15 foot setback has no uh, real impact to the um, preservation of any existing vegetation. That whole area is going to be cleared and graded in order to accommodate the future widening because if the wall goes in, uh, the town doesn't want to go in and regrade that area when uh, we're widening the road, so they're going to go ahead and grade that to, to uh, facilitate future widening. I did get some questions from a council member in regards to some existing dimensions, so I've, uh, we saw this slide last time and I provided some additional information. The wall at the highest point we could find and, and verified by the applicant's information was 10 and a half feet. It's located approximately a foot behind the right of way. And on top of that wall, there's a roughly four foot tall ornamental fence, 14 and a half feet from a foot by, or six feet behind the sidewalk uh, vertically to the top of the fence. And then you go back, the grade slopes up from the top of the wall, and then at 35 feet behind the right of way, you have a 25 foot tall uh, parapet based on their approved plans. So doing the math, you come up to about 46 feet from the existing street grade to the top of the parapet at, at the position where we think it's probably the most uh, drastic height difference. And you guys received a, a revised exhibit uh, which corrected location of the wall on the Harris Teeter side uh, at your table. And this slide does include that exhibit uh, to kind of go over, and I'm not going to belabor it, but um, the site angles uh, between the two, the shorter building being located closer to the street and the taller building being located farther away from the street, roughly a 6% 6 difference in the angle, uh, 1.5 degrees between the 24.14 and 25.6. That concludes staff's comments. Uh, we did provide a summary with the original request, the revised request, and, and just kind of a brief summary of our comments. Uh, the comments and observations for the site plan itself remain substantially unchanged from the original plan. Uh, the, the changes weren't of any significance in regards to the approval criteria in the ordinance in that case. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hales. Any cross-examination of the town? No? Nope. See, the party believe there's any, comp any evidence that's been presented that uh, warrants a continuance of this hearing. Nope. All right. Continuing on, we're going to open the deliberative phase of the hearing for council members. Questions or comments? I just have a couple of questions, and I really appreciate this um, cross-section because it helped me quite a bit. The, the back of curb to back of sidewalk item that is provided on the Harris Teeter side, did, am I getting this right that it's a 10 foot from the back of curb to the front of the sidewalk, and then the sidewalk is 5 foot Six inches? There's a f 10 foot from the back of curb to the inside, the outside edge of the sidewalk. So there's oh, a five yeah. foot strip, so five foot sidewalk, and there's a five and a half foot of extra right of way before you get to the actual right of way. And then comparing that to the proposal on the other side, what will that look like? Back of curb to back of sidewalk? When it's ultimately like constructed by the town or a future development project along the corridor, it will look very similar. They're not proposing to make the widening at this point because it's not required due to the scope of the project, if you remember okay. from last time. Okay, so this is a little, this is the on the ground after day one. This isn't after the road's been widened. Correct. This is, this is the existing, this will be the in the state condition when they build this project. Let me ask you they're, a question. They're not proposing to widen anything on that side. So when, once the road is widened, on the west side, there's five and a half feet outside of the sidewalk between the sidewalk and the retaining wall, correct? Correct. And then with the, when the road gets widened, would we have 15 feet between the back of the sidewalk and the retaining wall? Assuming the widen, widening conforms to our CTP cross-sections, that is correct. That's the okay. standard CTP cross-section. Now, okay. if there's a turn lane or something that gets thrown in there, that may. Yeah, widen. I just wanted okay. to just make sure I understand. Is the, some people will think, oh, this is the way it's going to look. Well, it's not necessarily. So that's, that's now. That's that would be the, the soon state. Right. Now. Okay. All righty. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I really appreciate this cross-section, and I appreciate, I, I believe it's Catherine, your work and your explanation of what you've done. Um, 
that helped clarify a lot, and I really appreciate it. I think you did a great job. Um, I'm really glad that you put the sidewalk back in, too. I think that is a huge improvement to the site. It makes me feel a lot better about the whole project, and I know it's just one sidewalk, but it was very important to me. So um, I like this a lot more than the last time I saw it. Other comments, questions? You asked the question I had about the sidewalk. So. Okay, I have no other comments or questions. Okay. Okay. Just, uh, it's more of an aesthetic thing. Is the coloring that we've seen on the charts, as that gray or the white, has, has that been determined? Because it looked a little uh, institutional. That's not, yeah. that's just to show difference between the two sites? Yes. Could you come up to the microphone? Right now it was just diagrammatic coloring and it was supposed to be representative of um, like a, a tan color and nice deep red brick mm -hmm. to kind of coincide with all of the existing structures. Okay. Thank you. I would just add, don't kill yourself trying to make it look like everything else around there. <laughs> <laughs> a little different is okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I also appreciate the applicant's efforts to address some of the concerns, especially regarding the sidewalk, that they didn't have to. Um, to me, that says a lot that the applicant is serious about building a quality project and addressing you know, all the council's concerns. Um, five feet might not sound like a lot, but in the grand scheme of things, I think it makes a pretty significant difference. So I think my concerns are alleviated. There are no other comments or questions I can close. The, oh, Mr. George. Well, I would just say that, that this addresses this picture, uh, this cross section addresses the question I had when I watched the video is because I really believe that having driven through there, that the Harris Teeter was a higher, a higher line of sight than this building would be so that you, you don't feel like you're being shattered by one more than the other, and this proves it an, a degree and a half difference means we basically we've got a very balanced look here rather than one sided one of the one way or the other. So I really appreciate this; is uh, makes a lot of sense to me. Okay. okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay, I'm going to close the public comment portion of the hearing and ask council members for a motion on the requests and modifications. Make a motion to approve mod uh, modifications A and C. There's a motion. Is there a second? A second. And a second. Further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. I'll now ask council for a motion. Make a motion to approve the site plan. Second. There's a motion and a second. Discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. And I'll ask our attorney, Mr. Silverstein, if there's anything left outstanding. I don't believe so. Okay. And having said that, I'll close this public hearing. Thanks, everyone. We we'll now move to our second and final quasi-judicial public hearing. It's for the Point Church. Mr. George, I understand that you have a disclosure to make before we begin. Yes, as a uh, as a member of that church or that church body, I, I feel more like the applicant and don't feel I feel like it's a conflict of interest to sit in, and so I'd like to recuse myself from uh, the decision on this on this project. Okay, and before uh, we entertain a motion from council to do so, I ask Ms. Silverstein his opinion on that recusal. Yes, actually, Mr. George and I have discussed it <clears throat> previously, and I think that uh, one of the things that council has to be concerned about not only is conflict but the appearance of conflict and I think Mr. George recognized that so it would be appropriate for him to be recused. Okay. I'm a member. Very good. This time I'd entertain um, a motion to recuse Mr. George from considering this matter. So I'll moved. Make, there's a motion and a second. Discussion? All in favor please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Okay, so all Mr. George's <laughs> Being uh, recused, I'll move on. Uh, an overview of the hearing procedures and detailed rules are attached to the printed agenda. All speakers who want to speak at this public hearing must be administered an oath by, I'll call her Mrs. Johnson now rather than Miss Jenny, uh, <laughs> who is to my right, and we'll pause just a moment to allow those individuals who like to speak at the public hearing to approach Mrs. Johnson and receive their oaths, and the council will pause from doing or saying anything until that has been completed.
This time we'll ask council members for any site visits, expert day communications, financial relationships, specialized knowledge, or close relationship to an affected person to disclose. Starting on my right with Mrs. Robinson. None. Smith. I have none. I have none. Mr. France. No, sir. Ms. Bush. No. Mr. Yerhoff. All right. Very good. Based on the disclosures we've heard from council members, I'd invite anyone to the podium who has been sworn in to speak if you have an objection to a council member's participation in this hearing. Seeing no one will continue, and I'll open the quasi-judicial public hearing. Mr. Levelin of our staff will introduce this here. Good evening, Council. This is a request by the Point Church of the Triangle for approval of a special use and a site plan for an addition to an existing church. The applicant is also requesting three modifications to the requirements of the development ordinance. The site is located at 1503 Walnut Street. It's on the north side of Walnut Street, east of the intersection of Nottingham Drive and Walnut Street. Walnut is designated as a thoroughfare on the comprehensive transportation plan. There are several transit, existing transit routes uh, for C-Tran that travel on this uh, segment of Walnut Street. There's also a triangle transit route that operates on this segment of, of Walnut Street. Uh, there are no stream buffers present on this site. The site is located in a residential multifamily zoning district. Uh, there's also a, an existing uh, apartment or multifamily development located on the property to the north and the east. That's, that's one property, uh, also in the RMF zoning district. Detached housing uh, located to the west in an R12, which is a single family uh, zoning district. This is also located in the South Hills mixed-use overlay district. It's actually located on the edge of that district. The apartment complex is located in as well. The houses to the west are located outside of that mixed-use. So this site is on the, on the boundary of that. This is a recent aerial photograph showing existing conditions on the site. There is an existing church building on the site being 7,261 square feet in size. It's 1.9 acre property. Uh, parking exists uh, to the front, to the south of that church, uh, is mostly paved. There, there's some gravel uh, that's put, put down uh, to the west, which is the front door of the church or the front entrance of the church uh, is here, uh, is, is a paved gravel mix. And as you start going to the rear, to the north, that transitions to a uh, completely gravel parking lot. It's also five healthy champion trees on the site, which we'll speak more about in a moment. I know this isn't a very good graphic of the site plan, and I'll, the next slide has a much better graphic. I just wanted to show you the uh, site plan imposed on the aerial photographs to give you some sense of uh, how it fits in with the surrounding development. Uh, you'll see the proposed addition to the north of the existing church. It shows up much better here. North is up, so it's, it's oriented a little, uh, a little wobbly there, but this is uh, north up. See the addition, church addition, Again, to the north of the rear church, that is a 4,979 square foot uh, proposed addition. The applicant is also proposing to uh, formalize and pave the parking to the south of the church, so the areas that were gravel uh, that will be paved. They will restripe, uh, redelineate those spaces. Uh, the pavement to the west of the building addition, or excuse me, the drive aisle to the west. Oh, the building addition is currently gravel. That would be paved, and the applicant would add a few parallel spots, parallel parking spots along that drive aisle. The parking to the north of the proposed addition will remain gravel. However, it will be formalized and properly delineated with wheel stops. The result of that would be 67 parking spaces are proposed. The uh, ordinance requires 60 parking spaces based on the capacity of the church. The proposed addition is going to be faced with a light brown brick with a darker brick pilasters that you can see on each of the three facades. Of course, the addition uh, attaches the building on the south facade. There is a metal roof, uh, and the addition has uh, is two stories. One story is actually below grade, which is a partial story. Uh, above grade, of course, as you notice, has an appearance of a two-story building, but that is a single-story occupancy with a, with a larger ceiling. The applicant is proposing three modification requests to the development ordinance. 
the first being the adverse impact to three champion trees, A1 being a 36 inch sweet gum, A2 and A3 being just east of the building are 36 inch uh, white oaks. Uh, and I will say the, we are terming this as a uh, modification due to adverse impacts to the critical root zone that exceed 25%. The applicant has indicated to us they may or may not actually choose to remove the trees, which is their choice whether they remove them or not, but a modification request is still required because the impact is more than 25%. So I'm just going to refer to them for brevity as being removed, whether or not the applicant does choose to remove them. The second modification request is a reduction to the western landscape buffer. This is required to be 40 feet adjacent to the residential properties, 30 feet adjacent to this southern property, which appears vacant but actually is a utility substation for, I believe it's Bell South. There is a, some above grade equipment on that property. So the LDO would require a 30 foot type B yard here, a 40 foot type A yard here. The applicant is requesting a modification to reduce that entire buffer area to 20 feet. And finally, the third modification request is a request to reduce the streetscape from a 30 foot requirement to a 25 foot requirement. This concludes staff's initial presentation. Uh, of course, we'll return after the speakers uh, in support and opposition have had a chance to present their testimony uh, with our professional observations. Thank you, Mr. Levin. This time we'll call on the applicant's attorney to present arguments and evidence in support of the application by addressing the applicable approval criteria. Good evening. My name is Nicholas Carr. Uh, I'm with the North Carolina Real Estate Law Firm. I'm actually a member of the Point Church um, and I'm here to uh, kind of present our case. Um, uh, this evening, we have several witnesses that are present. We have Chris Hankins, who is the senior pastor of the Point Church. We have Don Sever, who is our site plan developer and designer. Um, we have Matthew Peach, who is a traffic engineer with um, AMT. Thank you, AMT. Uh, and we also have Neil Gustafson, who is with uh, Watch and Worthy, um, who is uh, an appraisal expert on commercial properties uh, to um, talk about both the criteria for um, uh, the special use permit application that we're putting in today and the site plan development that's today. Um, at this time, I'd like to um, in, uh, call um, Mr. Hankins up to just briefly discuss um, uh, the purpose of this new uh, addition and um, tell you a little bit more about what the um, uh, addition's proposed use is uh, intended for. Uh, thank you for your time uh, this evening. Uh, so we are proposing a, uh, an addition basically is a lobby for our church. Um, if you go in now, the lobby is very small. Um, there is one um, mixed-use bathroom, uh, unisex bathroom, to service our entire church. Um, if you come in on a Sunday morning, um, it is very constraining. Uh, to the purposes of our church. And so really the, the main goal is to be able to uh, service the property and service the church well. Um, so that's, that is the primary uh, reason for <coughs> the addition. Mr. Hankins, could you state your address and uh, your yeah, so my name part is, of the record? Yeah, Chris Hankins, and I am Christopher Hankins. I'm the lead pastor at the Point Church. And your address? Personal. Which address do you need? For the record, you can give the business address. Yeah, it's 1503 Walnut Street, the, here in North Carolina. You just need an address. And okay, an address. Thank okay. you very much. Yes. Thank you. I'm trying to follow all the rules. Here. No, I understand. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. This is my first time. So. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. Okay. Um, this site was originally um, Cary Christian Church. It was built in the 1970s. Um, the developments, every neighborhood, all the neighborhood and the um, uh, surrounding uh, mixed-use um, multifamily sites were all built uh, after the church had been in place and the LDO was put in place uh, soon after that. And so uh, for us, in order for us to be able to do the, the expansions on this church, um, uh, uh, we do need to apply for the special use permit to be able to come back into compliance. Um, and as staff did present, we do have a few uh, modifications to the LDO. Um, uh, the first, if I, if I may go back, uh, is on the critical root zone. Um, specifically, these three trees. I'm going to move over to this microphone right here. 
these three trees. If you can see right here, we have the existing structure of the building, um, uh, trees A3 and A2 here. Um, uh, part of the critical root zone that's being affected is actually being impacted by the existing structure that's there. Um, uh, as was stated before, the zoning on this property is uh, a mixed use, which does not require a buffer specifically on the north and the um, eastern sides of the property. We are actually going to be putting in a type B buffer along those uh, sides of the property specifically to compensate for the negative impact on uh, the champion trees uh, and to compensate for the impact on the critical root zone of those trees. Um, if you'll notice on um, site A there, A1, the, um, uh, the tree on the other side um, that is being impacted, um, the impact is, is because of the paving that's being put forward there. Now, I know that the LDO specifically does encourage, and we do like to see these site plans, we do like to see um, uh, pavement go in place to cover up gravel um, uh, for aesthetic reasons, obviously, and we have the brand new structure that we're proposing to put in front. We do want to pave that, obviously. Um, we believe that that impact on the critical root zone, especially the deep roots of that champion tree, should not be horribly affected, but as far as the standards that are in the LDO, we do understand that that, that is an impact. We just wanted to kind of put forward what, that, what we believe that is. Um, along this um, structure, and um, I believe it is in the, um, uh, the staff report's um, uh, map, if I may. The landscape map on page eighty nine. You'll see um, some of the specific changes that we have um, proposed to um, the buffer zones, showing the different trees that are going to be in place. Um, along the um, uh, eastern and northern sides of the property, um, there are several um, uh, trees that Don Sever, our site plan developer, will be able to discuss spe more specifically in detail um, that are there. There are other trees that are just outside of that proposed buffer um, uh, that we would like to include as um, counting toward the replacements. Um, uh, uh, encroachments on the um, champion from the champion trees, the, the negative impact that we would ask that the council include as a part of that buffer. Um, as those um, trees are strong trees, they're doing quite well, and uh, we, we have no plans to remove them. The church has no plans to specifically to remove those. Um, if I may move on to the next buffer or to the next um, uh, uh, change to the LDO. Um, is the buffer along the uh, western side of the property that abuts the commercial pro or the vacant lots there that's owned by Bell South, as well as the residential properties that are there. Um, the buffer zone, um, as uh, council said, um, does require 30 and 40 feet. If you'll notice along that buffer zone, there are several parking spaces. The, the majority of the parking space, spaces that are there um, will be negatively impacted if we needed to go the full 40 um, feet buffer that would be required under the current LDO. Um, uh, if I do my math correctly, um, that would be about a 25% reduction in the parking spaces that would need to be readjusted under a new site plan if we were to go under that existing structure. Additionally, the, um, the residential properties that abut the, the um, church property, um, there is a very tall wooden fence there. I believe it's a 10-foot fence um, that is technically on the residential property uh, uh, lots themselves. Um, it goes the entire length beyond the, um, the Point Church's property across the uh, multi-use, multi-family uh, uh, zone that is the border between that zone and the residential zone that's next door. Um, it runs the length, and the uh, buffer that we want to put in, the type A buffer, um, we would hope combined with that wooden fence would um, be enough to offset any reduction in the um, buffer that we are uh, requesting specifically there. Um, the final uh, exemption and, and change from the LDO that we are asking for is um, uh, uh, reducing the streetscape uh, off of Walnut Street there. If you'll notice, there's six parking spaces um, on the front that would be negatively impacted if we had a full 30-foot streetscape. We're asking for a reduction in just five feet so that we can squeeze those spaces in. Um, if we did have the full 30-foot streetscape um, there, not only would we lose those, um, those parking spaces, um, parking is also very limited, as you can see. It, we're, we're trying to make uh, uh, limited 
eliminate out of uh, places to put people on the, on the uh, on the site for parking. If we did have that full 30 foot um, uh, streetscape, we would have to rework the entrance, and there would be several parking spaces specifically that abut the um, uh, southern part of the existing structure there, and those spaces would very likely need to be removed to allow for proper ingress and egress of traffic on and off of the property. Um, Along with this, we have um, uh, put in an application specifically for um, uh, the special use um, uh, permit for the changes to this property. Um, if you'll notice that in the staff comments, and I'm sure staff will discuss this uh, coming up shortly, um, we have not, at the time of the application, um, the, uh, uh, an appraisal opinion and a traffic impact study had not been submitted specifically to staff. I do have copies of that, which I would like to um, enter into evidence for the council to review um, today at this hearing. Um, we do have the um, authors of both of those um, studies and uh, opinions um, who are also available for comment today. Um, can we enter that to the clerk to evidence? Thank you. Again, thank you for this opportunity. If you have any questions, uh, we'll be glad to answer them. Thank you. At this time, we'll invite other speakers who have been sworn in and wish to speak in support of the application to approach the podium one at a time. Anyone else to speak in support of the application? <clears throat> Seeing no one, we'll continue, and I would invite cross-examination of the witnesses who testified in support of the request. Any cross-examination? No? Okay, we're going to open the hearing now to those who are opposed to the request. Anyone opposed to the request? All right. I'll call on town staff for any additional testimony. Thank you. Uh, this does require a special use permit, as was stated, uh, just to briefly explain uh, that churches located in residential districts that are less than 20 acres in size uh, do require a special use permit. Uh, an expansion of a church therefore requires a special use permit. Uh, the land use plan states that institutional uses should ideally be located in activity centers. Uh, this is in the South Hills Mixed Use Center, which uh, essentially is an activity center. So the use does therefore comply with the land use plan. I would like to go over uh, briefly and talk about the modification requests uh, and give some observations in regards to those. Uh, first, uh, or modification request is the impact or removal of the three champion trees. The two 36-inch white oaks uh, are located directly adjacent to the building addition and are adversely impacted by the addition itself. The, uh, the impact from the existing church building actually w was discounted. It's, it's the impact of the addition, uh, but it's uh, fairly adjacent to that. Um, so the impact was well over 25%. Uh, the addition uh, was located uh, seemingly to, to make best use of the floor plan there uh, and certainly to minimize disruption to the, uh, to the existing site pattern, the drive aisles and the, the parking. Uh, if you move it to the west, uh, you <coughs> jeopardize access to the rear, to, to the parking to the north. If you shift the addition to the north, uh, that's their two champion trees that they are leaving, uh, one being a 46-inch white oak, um, that you could start to impact those uh, CRZs, uh, so it's a bit of a balancing act for them. The preservation of the sweet gum tree um, seemed more feasible if they did not pave that drive aisle uh, in front of the addition and remove that parking, uh, which was above and beyond the ordinance requirement. You could reduce the impact to the CRZ for that sweet gum below 25 percent and preserve that tree. Uh, again, did want to note that they are preserving those two. Um, champion trees to the north of the site, on the north of the site. So I'd like to point out here and here. Uh, secondly, the reduction of the landscape buffer along the western property line 
from 40 feet adjacent to the residences uh, to 20 feet, from 30 feet adjacent to the Bell South uh, utility substation to, to 20 feet. Uh, the site has a non-conforming buffer now. Uh, it's not exactly clear what the width is. It's not a uniform uh, width. Uh, the parking lot is, is kind of jagged, but it seems to be approximately uh, 20 feet, so there's uh, little to no approximate reduction in the in a 20-foot streetscape that they're proposing to what is there now. Of course, they will have to supplement the existing vegetation to meet type A standards. And lastly, the reduction of the streetscape. Uh, the applicant is dedicating 17 feet of right-of-way uh, per the requirements of the Comprehensive Transportation Plan. Uh, they are removing some paved and gravel area from the front of the site, the south of the site, uh, and to scoot the parking lot back to achieve the 25-foot width. Uh, achieving a 30-foot streetscape, uh, as Mr. Carr indicated, would jeopardize uh, parking spots and likely take them below the 60 parking spots that are, are required. Uh, that concludes staff's presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you. At this time, I'd ask the applicant's attorney if they have any cross-examination. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, specifically to the um, special use permit, um, uh, one thing I did forget to mention I want to uh, address specifically in the reports that were presented to you, um, the impact study on the um, traffic ingress-egress. Um, if you look on page 10 of the report that's in front of you, one thing I did want to point out in the conclusions um, that uh, Mr. Peach did come to that was that uh, the traffic impact specifically on the um, what the addition of the property would commit to uh, Walnut Street would be very minimal. If you look at the top of uh, page 10, I believe it's at the top of um, the uh, um, the subheading there, uh, the actual calculation that he came to was uh, point zero zero point zero zero five percent of an uh, increased impact about 15 cars at peak time specifically on a Sunday uh, and that uh, assessment was done um, also in December uh, right when people are going shopping at Cary Town Center too so we think that that may also be an increased number as well um, on the um, appraisal report specifically um, our um, appraiser uh, believes that the uh, impact to the adjoining neighbors um, would be minimal and uh, would not inure specifically on the tax value of the surrounding properties. Um, beyond that, that's, that's all I have today. Thank you. Okay, very good. This time I'll ask either party, the town or the applicant, if they have any objections to the competency of the evidence or testimony. Any objections? No? Nope. All right. Um, either party believe that evidence has been presented tonight that warrants a continuance of the hearing? Nope. We'll now begin the deliberative phase of the hearing. I'll open it up to council members for comments and questions. Well, I could start with a question, uh, to, I think, to staff here. Um, <clears throat> on the west side, uh, the adjoining neighbors, it's currently 40 feet. Do I understand that correctly? I, there's not a 40-foot yard there. The current ordinance requirement is for 40 feet. Since they're proposing an addition and they're proposing to alter the parking area, that triggers a requirement to essentially retrofit the site to meet today's requirement. But what, what's actually out there in the field right now is closer to a 20-foot yard. I thought there was a mention of a fence. Is there or is there not a fence over there? There, there is a fence is, is what the survey shows. That's on the adjoining, adjoining, adjoining properties, excuse me, so, okay. so not on so the site. Their fence. Okay. Correct, the residence's fence. So. Is there any requirement from staff that if we reduce uh, that significantly from 40 to 20 that we should have opaque buffers? Well, you, know, you have fences, but fences aren't always permanent, and it's a well-established. Correct. The, they'll have to supplement to a type A standard, which requires uh, canopy trees and 14 evergreen understory trees, which achieves a great deal of opacity, uh, maybe not complete. Um, but it is, a, it is a, the most full screening yard that the tower requires. Other questions? Ms. Sierra? Well, I, I don't think this is going to be a popular objection with some of the other council members, but the sweet gum tree. Um, so I do have a, a problem no. with that, yes. Really? Really? Yes. 
You don't have and that's one. That's the only problem I have with really? this. I'm fine Seriously. with everything else. And, and Are you just really? Just a I told you it wasn't going to be a popular objection. I, 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 he doesn't have one. Right. Anybody have <laughs> one? No, if, if we're, we're impacting a tree um, <clears throat> the, for getting six or seven extra spot parking places, which are not needed based on our ordinance, you know, and for paving something that maybe doesn't necessarily need to be paved, it's not in the way of the building. I'm okay with the other two. I'm not okay with the other two, but I, I'm, the, the argument is made very well, I think, for the other two trees to, to have to go away. If we save those trees, the building would be moved back and we'd lose two other ones at the top. So, I mean, I'm okay with those two. But that other one doesn't get in the way of the building. And I believe even in the staff report, uh, the staff usually favors uh, paving parking lots and in this case came down on the other side. In other words, Correct. To save the tree then in the parking lot. So I concur with that um, decision. And my my question to staff was going to be one for a later work session or something. I mean, are we allowed to like pick and choose what trees our champion yeah. tree ordinance applies to? Because yeah. I think the majority. We don't care about a sweet gum tree. Yeah, it's a nuisance. Um, the LDO it does, it does classify sweet gum as a lower tier. It's a tier two, yeah, right. unless okay. it's in a root But we, we could, like, pull it out altogether if we wanted, right? If you want to. Sweet. That's my understanding. All right. Sweet. <laughs> um, to me, I was actually stunned that a church that's adding this much more square footage only needs 60 parking spaces. That was kind of shocking to me. I, I would imagine it would be more. Um, I'm not sure if they have a share. The parking, parking is based on the seating in the sanctuary, which is not increasing. Uh -huh. So they're adding almost 5,000 square feet. The parking requirement does not increase at all. I know. It just seemed low, but whatever. It's not my church. Um, I, I don't have a problem with the two other trees. I mean, you could try to save them all you want. The reality is you're going to impact the root structure so much they're going to die and then probably fall on the new building. So um, kind of see them coming out. Um, I have no problem with the sweet gum tree. Um, reducing the buffer, I'm fine with, especially down by the substation. I'm not sure why we need a really 30-foot buffer there. Um, and a five-foot reduction along Walnut Street, I think, is pretty consistent with a lot of other things in the area. So I'm, I'm fine with all the modification requests. Now, I tend to agree with you. All the requests that made are, are common sense and really needed. There's really no... None that I object to. All right. Somebody want to make a motion? Yeah, and I'll just make a point of clarification just from someone who has a sweet gum and wished that she listened to the um, architect and builder who told me to get rid of it. I wish I would have gotten rid of it. So as a as someone who's lived with one, <coughs> frankly, things I can only imagine the nuisance it also is to all the people who park there. You know, they're not a nice tree they do a lot of sap on the cars uh, a lot of cleanup required in fact most landscapers call it a nuisance tree um, and so I, I I understand you know I'm a you know speak for the trees kind of Lorax person as well normally but I I'm not speaking of the sweet gum <laughs> we actually just took out over 20 of them at our property out in Smithfield Wow. <laughs> Okay, other comments or questions before we move to the motion phase? Okay, I'm going to close the public comment portion of the hearing and ask council members for a motion on the requested special use. Make a motion to approve modification requests, special AG and... Special use. Oh, special special use. use. Make a motion to approve special use requests. Second. There's a motion and a second discussion. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Now request a modification. Could you do the modification separately? I'll do them one at a time so you can. Or at least A separately. I make a motion to approve modification requests B and C. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. A discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Make a motion to approve modification, modification request A. Second. There's a motion and a second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? No. Motion carries five to one. Site plan. Make a motion to approve site plan. Second. Motion and a second. Discussion? Again, I'm going to vote no because of the, the tree being literally <laughs> in the way <laughs> of 
my vote. Otherwise, I, I certainly approve everything else. I love to see expansions to churches. I think it's a great plan. I, I wish everyone well with it, but I, I am going to vote no because of the tree. Okay. Other discussion points? All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. It carries unanimously. No. No. Oh, no. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Five to one. Yeah, yeah. He didn't. I, I heard <laughs> <laughs> one ear out the other. Thank you, Council. Here. Mr. Silver, <clears throat> everything seems to be in order. Well, I've heard of badgering the witness, but I've never heard of badgering, badgering one. <laughs> 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 we other do it than that, I think everything was fine. We do it. All right, I'll close the public hearing. There's no other business. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Now we're going to close session. No, no closed no, session. Uh, no. Discussion. Sweet. All in favor, please say aye. <laughs> aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously, and we are adjourned. Thank you.